Have you ever noticed that the voice in your head isn't you? Like if you so, if you repeat the word hello now five times, silently in my head. In your head, yeah. Okay. And everybody listening and watching, just repeat the word yeah. hello five times. Okay. Could you hear that? I could hear it, yeah, okay. in my head. Ah, shit. Did you know this master teacher had to eat the inside of a human skull to get the secrets of the universe? Many, many, many African tribes believe that when the gods came down from the sky, they found human beings very, very stupid. They are looking better than ever. Dolphins are not fishes. They are Amashengeko, the saviors. They are people. What's up, amazing people? It's me again. Welcome and welcome back to yet another video. Guys, I have been fighting a silent battle with YouTube. I also take so much time and effort creating these videos just for them to get turned down. It doesn't make sense, you know. But I really do hope that this video is going to be okay. And I read somewhere a quote by George, a quote by George Martin that says, When you tear out a man's tongue, you are not proving him a liar. You are only telling the world that you fear what he might say. That makes so much sense. I really do hope that you are not going to take down more of my videos because I put too much effort and work in what I do. But the thing is, I love what I do and I'm not going to stop at nothing. So, yeah. Sometimes YouTube and their policies, oh boy. Let them not stop us. So, kindly share this video. And without further ado, let's go straight to the video. What in the Hollywood miracle healing? Reported in December, she had lost control of her muscles. Her at the Grammys a mere two months later. I love you right back. <laughs> looked pretty in control here. Then there's Demi Moore with her transformation. Was looking like surgery gone wrong. Then perfection without evidence. They are looking better than ever. When I say that, um, I'm happy to be here. I really mean it. That is one huge transformation, but it's really crazy what money can buy you. The direct interview with the pilot who transported the 15 feet tall Kandahar giant. Back in 2005, I was actually stationed or deployed to Qatar. It was a completely normal mission for us. We were not alerted for anything abnormal. It was in the middle of the day. Uh, I remember uh, coming into a base in Afghanistan called Bagram. Back in those days, it was pretty austere. It was an old Russian air base that we were using. Um, it's basically built in a bowl in the mountains where you have to stay high right up in the last minute, and then you basically come screaming back down to, to land. Uh, the area to the side of it was called the Valley of Death because during uh, the Soviet days with the uh, Mujahideen, they had fired their rockets into a lot of the uh, helicopters, so you could see all kinds of uh, wrecks and stuff in the valley below, which for the most part I didn't pay attention to because I was a little busy getting the airplane on the ground safely. Uh, we landed and uh, basically was told to taxi to the very end of the tarmac. And, and like I said, it was middle of the day, very hot. I remember that. We opened the doors and unloaded the equipment that we had brought in. Uh, and then we were met at the aircraft by uh, what we later on called the babysitters. But uh, they kind of introduced themselves and said, hey, no cameras. Uh, nobody's taking pictures here. We're uh, moving some high-value stuff. 
Uh, when the load got there, uh, we're very, of course, uh, curious to see what it was because that's just the way you are when you're told that you're not allowed to have uh, a camera. Uh, they say this thing had been dead for maybe a day or two, uh, but it stunk. And when I say stunk, I've smelled dead things before, but this had a more of a, I want to say a musky stink, kind of a, not really a decay decay, but more of a, if somebody hadn't taken a shower in like 10 years type of a musty, uh, musky stink is all I can tell you. And it was basically a dead guy. And this guy was extremely large. And when I say large, uh, our pallets are basically, if I remember correctly, about nine by 12 feet or so. This guy was laying in a fetal position on the pallet. Uh, so he, and he filled the pallet. Uh, we estimated his size at approximately 12 to 10 feet tall. Uh, I did see his skin color. I was expecting somebody of more Arabic descent, uh, being in Afghanistan and all. I know he was dead, but he was very pale, very white. Another thing that uh, us and the rest of the crew did was we took our feet. We, he was in a fetal position, so you could take your feet and put it kind of, you could see where his feet were there, and they were they were wrapped up. He did not have shoes on, but he had like, uh, looked like he was wrapping them in some kind of a, canvas type stuff, but we were sticking our feet up next to his feet and his feet were extremely big. We know that the, the standard weight on one of those pallets is uh, about 1500 pounds. And I do remember that the loadmaster did the weights and it was around 1100 pound guy. The pallet sits on dunnage. You know what dunnage is? It, it's uh, basically like railroad ties so that you can get a forklift underneath it and pick it up. So it was on dunnage and basic dunnage is like maybe a four by four. And then the pallet is, say, yay thick. It's actually aluminum and balsa wood. And uh, this guy, I mean, laying down was very, very wide. I mean, and he was, like I said, he's in a fetal position. And you go up and just you hit it. And, of course, he's under a tarp and all that. I understand that. But he was one dense, he was a dense guy. Uh, we questioned the babysitters of, hey, where'd you get this guy? And... Uh, some of the army guys there with him, uh, relayed to us that, uh, this guy had, I guess, been living up in the mountains, uh, next to a village where the villagers basically treated him like a god. I did infer that they were uh, making sacrifices to this guy because they said he was, they found bones of people. The giant supposedly, like I said, I was not there, supposedly killed the first team that they came across. He was extremely big and fast and agile for a guy that size. They sent up another team, and when the second team went in there to get him, supposedly he had already started to basically eat on the team that uh, that had been killed the first time. They then grabbed a helicopter, and the helicopter brought him down where we picked him up. After we loaded the Giant, it was just a standard uh, standard mission back. We took him all the way back to uh, El Yadid in Qatar, where he was transloaded onto a another airplane. I believe it was a C-17. Uh, I was done with my mission then. I got away from it. I was done. I did ask some questions later of, you know, where it might have gone. And as the grapevine goes, it was probably taken back to the United States. And the words I heard were right, Pat. But again, I don't know. Yo, this is some serious stuff. And the fact that that one giant exists, then it shows that there could be more, probably like a whole family or something that exists up there in the mountains. And you know what's even more crazy? Like growing up, I used to hear stories from my grandparents when they used to tell me about giants and how giants, you know, used to abduct young girls and looking back at it right now yeah it was a story back then but looking at it right now these stories could have been gotten from somewhere because i mean why didn't they not talk about ais or cars or whatever years ago a race of intelligent creatures of various kinds chaperoned the human race into this world in which we are in exile and members of this race went into the sea to become what we today call dolphins, amashengeto. Over the centuries, dolphins and whales sent knowledge via dreams to human beings. 
the whales told us all about God. The dolphins told us all about wisdom and art and other forms of positive creativity. We black people believe that these dolphins are not fishes. They are Amashengeto, the saviors. They are people. They have a kingdom under the sea. They have stories that they tell to their children. And they have hopes for the future. We say that they came with their great emperor, Wawane, from the star called Sirius by the white people many, many millennia ago. In ancient Greece, in ancient Africa, and in other parts of the world were originally used for focusing human thought and for looking into the future. This is what I am doing now. I am trying to visualize the eye of a dolphin and to call it here using this most ancient of objects. I've ever heard of them being banned in some countries, but that would be crazy if you think about it. Yeah, but yeah, I've always known there's something unique, really unique about dolphins. I was today years old when I found out. The Book of Enoch, Mamiwata. In 1984, a 26 year old woman appeared on the beach of Anloga, a coastal town in the Kita district of the Volta region of Ghana, West Africa. When she walked into her family home, her relatives embraced her with joy and confusion. She had been missing for three years. Her family was full of questions. Why had she vanished? Where had she gone? And what had happened to her in the intervening years? The story the young woman told them left her family worried and confused. The young woman explained that she had been kidnapped while walking on the beach and taken to a community far away where she had been held captive. She had lived among her captors for three years and in that time had been forced to bear children. But the most shocking part of the young woman's story was still to come. Her family pressed her to tell them where she had been living, why she hadn't been able to contact them and who had taken her. Finally, she told them. She had been taken from the beach to an underwater base. The people had taken her in order for her to produce children. And most disturbing of all, the people who had taken her were not human. They were the Mami Wata people. What intrigues me is this narrative of abductions, which goes back thousands upon thousands of years. The Book of Enoch describes in dramatic detail a period in which 200 watchers arrive on planet Earth and begin abducting human females. With these women, the watchers produce hybrid beings who are human in form, but far larger than normal human beings. Mythologies around the world corroborate the Book of Enoch's account of abductions by extraterrestrial presences exiled on planet Earth. Although quoted verbatim in the New Testament letter of Jude and accepted as scripture by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Book of Enoch has never been included in the internationally accepted canons of scripture for either Judaism or Christianity. The fact that the Book of Enoch isn't in the official canons of scripture, I don't think is particularly important. First of all, we should acknowledge that it is in the canon of the Bible in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. It was quoted by Clement of Alexandria, one of the most significant of the early church fathers, as if it was scripture. Actually, in the book of Enoch, it speaks about 
uh, women who gave birth to giants or nephilim um, they later turned into into the into sirens yeah and speaking of which like stories about mummy waters that is the siren is so talked about and so common in Africa West Africa and cultures especially and there are so many people who've spoken of these mummy waters approaching them and even talking to them this is happening literally and that is so fascinating that this part is also in the book of Enoch and that book of Enoch is not part of the bible that that is very questionable if you ask me Africa is like another world, bro. Like nah, the Con- bro, the Congo is another world. So there's a the Congo monkeys. You talking about the Congo chimps? The that, Bondo apes. The, yeah, the Bondo apes. I'm talking about yeah. The, the things bo- that's like six feet tall, uh-huh. bro. Bro, what are those things? Cause then they like a bunch of like. Bro, they call them tree knockers and lion. Lion. There we go. The lion. That's bro, what they are. They're big enough to lion. They eat lions and they they said like that they've um used rocks to like break open turtle shells so they, they got some intelligence to them this is why i believe that bigfoot could possibly be real because of things not, like that and them things are six feet tall they said they're tall enough for you like the they walk on their goes. hind legs and they can see you eye to eye you know they be taking people's babies did you hear about the lady that the monkey snatched the baby and took it in the tree and they start eating the baby in front of her it was uh, the bondo uh, yeah she was walking with the baby in her hand or whatever yeah. he came down snatched the baby from her went in the tree and started eating the baby in front of her Oh my she gosh, about it. that's crazy, bro. Like, what do you do with that, bro? You need a gun. Not for real. And people thought that it was fake because they just thought it was like a legend until one of like the researchers caught a picture of him on like a trail camp. A disturbing vision reveals the origin of the AIDS virus. There is a shadow gliding over this world. I had a horrible dream a hideous vision of what it was, where it came from, and what it would do. I was shown a laboratory somewhere in the United States of America. I was shown scientists of several nations, French, British, and American, and Canadian, all collaborating in a hideous experiment which was to introduce diseases which would wipe out whole armies which would debilitate whole populations in times of war and one of these diseases is the thing we call AIDS AIDS is a man-made disease created as a weapon of war a weapon of war which proved so terrible that it had to be abandoned. They could not destroy the virus. They gave it to a firm of toxic waste disposal. But by that time, a number of containers of this hideous disease, which were yellow, on the outside of very thick metal with glass containers inside them had already been taken to the land of the Germans and there they had been stored in a secret place. Someone suggested that some of them should be dumped into the North Sea, not far from the west of Scandinavia. But others said no, they should be taken with other poisonous waste to that world country and buried there. A ship came from Europe bearing these containers and one of them had a fault in its lid. A little accident occurred and a sailor touched one of the yellow cylinders and was contaminated by it through cuts in his hands. Well, there have been reports now of this British seaman that went back to about 1954 when the ship died in England, and they went back and they had his tissues, and they had blood, and they were tested that he was, he was found to be HIV positive. When the ship arrived in West Africa, the cylinders were taken up aboard a truck, and from there, they were taken aboard 
a dirty looking helicopter. I could see them clearly what they did. This was contrary to agreement reached between this company and a corrupt African official. Because the agreement had been that a hole should be dug very deep, but the official and his friends decided to pocket the money. They decided simply to dump the waste in an African lake in a country called Cameroon. Some of the local villagers started becoming sick. And then the disease spread into Central Africa. In the very near future, people dying of AIDS will pose the greatest security threat that the Western civilization has ever seen. All life is a melody. If you can find the right rhythm, you can cure the patient. The people who created AIDS have the effrontery to say that AIDS is a disease of African origin. Have the cheek to say that AIDS was created by God in order to put an end to promiscuity on this planet, which is absolute nonsense. What I find most horrifying is that the same people are telling us a blatant lie that AIDS is incurable. It is curable. It can be cured, but not by drugs. My visions tell me, in order to cure AIDS, sound in various forms must be used. If the sound is carefully calculated, the sound would be capable of destroying the AIDS viruses within the human being without endangering the human being at all. I'm really not surprised. Like, there's always something to do with African countries. Like, we don't matter. And that's why they felt that it was necessary for them to bring the virus and bury it in Africa. Because, I mean, Africa is just Africa, you know. And what he has said about the vibration and healing the HIV with, vi with vibration, um, this explains why uh, Nikola Tesla said that in order to understand the universe, you must think, you must think in terms of frequency, in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So... Maybe, I don't know, maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, but it's just crazy that Africa has to really bear all these things, despite so many things taken from us, you know, it's really not fair. But also, this should be a wake-up call to my brothers and sisters, because nobody's coming to save us. We have to save ourselves. Ashe, did you know this master teacher had to eat the inside of a human skull to get the secrets of the universe? Fredo Mutua, born July 21st, 1921. He was part of the Zulu nation. He grew up with his dad being part of the Christian faith and his mom still practicing ancient religion of the Zulu nation. Since he was young, they knew he was something. He would have prophetic drawings and have a strong intuition. It wasn't until he got really sick when he was like 16, none of the hospitals around him could heal him until his grandfather took him back to the village. They healed him up back to normal and it opened a whole new world to him. When he turned 16, he was asked to join the Sangoma. The Sangoma are very respected and highly advanced healers in the Zulu. They are able to use the physical and metaphysical to heal a person's whole being. They are known to have an in-depth knowledge of how the universe works. One of the many rituals they made Kriado do was eat brain out of a human skull that they had to dig up from a grave. And this was only one of the many different rituals they made him do before coming into Sangomo. In their society, they have to really know that they can trust you with this sort of knowledge and know that you are actually serious about receiving this knowledge. Credo was one of the first ones to talk about reptilians running everything, predicting 9-11, predicted HIV, and he said he got abducted. And tells a dead ass detailed story about it. Show love to this ancestor. This photo was taken by hikers in Bolivia. Initially, it just looks like an attractive shot of the surrounding area, but something odd can be spotted on the other side of the lake. Zooming in closer, there appears to be a semi-transparent creature walking along the edge of the water. 
we can see that the creature resembles the gray alien, with elongated arms and legs, a rounded head, with large bulbous eyes. The creature seems to be semi-transparent and doesn't have a reflection, so is this some kind of interdimensional creature, or just an elaborate hoax? Flying over Colombia, this passenger filmed a strange object flying past her window. Initially, it looks like it could be a balloon of some kind, but on closer inspection, the object appears metallic and is shaped like a cone. Was Mike trying to tell us something about shape-shifting? I was a huge Michael Jackson fan. But something seems odd. You'll see what I mean. Watch till the end. You. Be the judge. At the end of this clip, it's revealed that the black cat is actually Michael Jackson. In this next clip, you will see him change from green and back. Come on. Next, okay. we'll notice his eyes look like reptilian eyes, not a zombie or a werewolf. And again, in this scene, he'll go from human back to green. I guess zombies can be any color, but green is the most noticeable color. Reptilian eyes. Mike says he doesn't write his own songs. I understand that some people give credit to a higher being for their talents, but watch until the end. I'm just a source, I'm just a tunnel, a tube through which they come. I feel somewhere in space they've all been written before. I mean, Billie Jean and Beat It and all those songs have been up there somewhere. It just came through to me. That's how I really feel. So I, I even though I did it, I just can't always take credit. It's like any great artist, I guess, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, be doing it, but it's some other higher force that's higher making force. it happen. Maybe that's who we see in the next clip doing the moonwalk. Yes, the film is grainy, but just pay attention to his entire body. He seems to get bigger and turn green. In particular, watch his neck and his eyes start to bulge. Check it out. After watching this video hundreds of times, it's still hard for me to admit that Mike could have been a shapeshifter. I'll admit, I am a little suspect. Look at his eyes. And that neck is a little bit long. Check this experiment out, guys. You're going to want to see this, all right? This is rainwater versus tap water under an electrolysis machine, okay? If you don't know what an electrolysis machine is, what it does is it separates water molecules, which is hydrogen and oxygen. It breaks it down to a single molecule. Now, this is rainwater. And do you see what the tap water looking like, y'all? Do you guys see that? Let me ask you a question. Has your water been smelling funny lately? Like, it doesn't smell like chlorine or so, like rotten eggs. It smells like sewage. Has your water, it smells like this. It literally smells like that, y'all. Literally. So I don't believe in coincidences. Would you think it's far-fetched if they made a movie and told us that there's something in the water? This movie came out in 2019. Not only that, but there was a music festival called Something in the Water. And do you see the year 2020? This is when everybody was drinking the Corona. The Corona beers. Remember that, y'all? Everybody was drinking Corona around that time. Everybody was getting Corona wasted. But yeah, something in the water in 2020. And it goes right back to this. Could this be the reason why in some states it's 
illegal to collect rainwater. Now, I don't trust rainwater. I'm still not going to collect rainwater because Lord knows what's going on with those um, with planes right now, because planes are falling and all kinds of things are are falling out of the sky. So, yeah. Um, but do you guys see that? So I will say be careful because that's just just three minutes, three minutes. Imagine that on our body, y'all. And our skin is the biggest organ. So it absorbs everything we put on it. This is what we put on our body. I feel like everybody should be aware of this because it's our skin. It's our body. Like, we don't want that stuff on our body. Like, why would you do that? And TikTok, this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times because some of you people who work at TikTok are probably bathing and showering in this. So unless you guys have a really strong filter, but this is what's happening, y'all. Again, strictly for entertainment. Well, thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace out. I'm shocked that there are states where you can't harvest water. Like, what? Why? Why, why? why are people okay with that, honestly? Like, at this point, I think we know that tap water is just filtered sewage or something, yeah? And, ugh. Nothing else will do that. And in hospitals today, they use charcoal for poisoning cases. One girl said to me, I had an overdose and they gave me a choice to have my stomach pumped out or take charcoal. She said, I chose the charcoal. So charcoal absorbs and neutralizes poisons. So it can be used internally and it can be used externally. Now, charcoal doesn't have a taste. And you can use it if any poison has been ingested. And it can also be used if a person has diarrhea or um, gastric or bloating. The charcoal, when it's taken, will absorb and neutralize the poisons and can bring a lot of relief. So if ever I had a baby that had a bit of diarrhea, I'd give them a bit of charcoal. And when I got the black nappy, because I didn't use disposable nappy, I knew that my baby was well. Because once that charcoal goes through, it absorbs and neutralizes the poisons. So you can use it internally and you can use it externally. You use it externally, again, for cases of poisoning. So it can be used for a bee sting, a uh, ant bite, a snake bite. You don't have many snakes here. Hmm? <laughs> we have a few in Australia. Spider bites. Do you have spiders? Oh, maybe we don't need to talk about the charcoal. Wasps, <laughs> bees, any sting, um, it, it's quite incredible. You almost have to experience it to believe it, that it takes the pain out straight away. And the reason it takes the pain out is because it absorbs and neutralizes the poisons. Also, charcoal is best used as a toothpaste, yeah? If you don't want to uh, tamper with chlorine and the blockage of the pineal gland, yeah. So it has come to my attention that half of the population does not have an inner monologue. And people are starting to wake up to them not having an inner monologue. And he's not kidding either. I want you to check out Lil Bro's video. I've met people like this. Now I want you to hear her video and what she thinks about people who actually have a voice in her head, in their head, and what happens to her. Y'all check it out. Hi, I'm Olivia Rivera and I don't have an internal monologue. This is something that's kind of been going around the internet lately, if you've seen it. Uh, some people have an internal dialogue or an internal monologue where it's more of a constant stream of thoughts. I, on the reverse hand, feel that my thought process is more like sporadic or random jot notes. It's not my voice talking all the time, and it's more like I'm just seeing lines of thought, and maybe they have voices associated to them or tones associated to them but not necessarily my voice. If you're typing something on a computer and the lines are just kind of like appearing on the screen, I think that's kind of how my brain works and that's why jot notes feel like the best way to describe it. When I hear that other people have like a constant uh, kind of dialogue and stream in their head and that when they're doing a task, they'll just be thinking about things the entire time they're doing a task, it actually kind of feels a little overwhelming. Like how, how do you deal with that and how does that feel? I always thought it was something that people just manifested and made up, 
for movies and books and characters just to kind of like explain your inner thought process and like have like a way to explain your inner thought process um but i didn't realize that it was actually that constant for people that people did actually have a little kind of voice in their head telling them different things and what to do and what to think and stuff like that i don't have that sometimes I will just speak it out loud I find that especially when I'm alone I'll just kind of like oh encourage myself loud out loud versus kind of saying it in my head music lyrics come into my head a lot and I'll hear the music as the singer sings it so thinking my thoughts through before I say something uh, that is something that I never ever was good at when I was growing up I constantly get in trouble especially my mom she try to kind of instill in me no you have to think before you speak because I would often put my foot into my mouth and say something that I probably shouldn't have said as I grew up it didn't get better I didn't think before I spoke it's almost like I just got better at reading the situation subconsciously and knowing what to say and what to respond with because I'm not running things through my mind first, it does kind of lose that filter first. And that kind of contributes to the whole, like, people often know what I'm thinking because I will say exactly what I'm thinking. You know, I think it is something that we should know more about because I think that helps knowing how other people think. You can kind of react better and maybe expect less or more in for a situation because you can understand how they might be actually thinking in their heads. I know someone who's really personally close to me who is actually this way. It's pretty scary talking to him. Well, it's not scary. It's just very different because when I tell him to imagine something like he can't imagine it, like imagine that, like literally, like you, you literally can't imagine when I say imagine that, like, how does that, what is that about? That's crazy, y'all. So the things that I see that he can't see, he can't see things from my perspective because he can't imagine what I imagine yeah these people really is this this is this is literally a video game and what this means is some of the players are just not real but what a very interesting time to be alive because now this is very getting very popular and people are finding out about it y'all so what do you guys think about this video you guys ever come across these people well i don't know about you but to me it feels like these kind of people are winning because when she says that she doesn't think through her thought before she speaks that's like a brain of a child like they are so honest they just say what they think instantly yeah maybe that's why they are able to even see ghosts or other paranormal activities that we normal people can't see and i don't know that kind of feels like a relief because sometimes i just be begging my mind to just stop like I, sometimes i just wish i can just take my mind and just put it aside for a minute because yo Maybe that's not actually a bad thing. And you know how we always say, make peace with your demons, uh, tame your demons. What if these inner voice that we have are just little demons telling us what to do and what not to do? Have you ever thought about that? Because me thinking about it right now, is it kind of creeps me out because what? I mean, yo. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Do you have that internal monologue? Do you have that inner voice? How does it work for you? Because sometimes I just wish I didn't have it, honestly. Have you ever noticed that the voice in your head isn't you? Like if you so, if you repeat the word "hello" now five times in my head, in your head, yeah, okay, and everybody listening and watching, just repeat the word yeah. "hello" five times. Okay, could you hear that? I could hear it. Yeah, okay. in my head. So if you could hear that, then that voice cannot be you. It is your voice. Mm. It belongs to you, but it's not you. And if it's not me, yeah. then does that mean that that gives me power to ignore it? Exactly. Or to tell it it's wrong? Power to ignore it, mostly. Um, I've come to distrust it, to be honest, by paying very close attention to like, the voice in my head has told me to do something. I've done it. It didn't work out. Mm. That's happened multiple times. What happens if I just ignore it completely and just go about life without listening to it? What happens? Well, I'll tell you one thing that does happen. You don't suffer so much along the way. Even if the outcomes are the same, you got there without suffering because you weren't listening to what was going on in there. And I think people with ADHD have a unique ability to grasp what I just said because their voice is so strong in there. Nanda, I
Where's your favorite place to go? What do you see? I see something in the hand. I see something in the hand. In a tiny little. You see what? A bad thing. A bad thing. A bad thing. What does it look like? A ghost. A ghost? It is one. No, no, there's no ghosts. No ghosts here. Ghosts be gone. I wanna see a hand here. Uh, mommy, go in my room. It's not scary in my room. It's not scary in your room? Mm -hmm. Well, you need to stop acting weird. It's scary in here. It's not scary in here. It's a scary thing floating in the house. There's a scary thing floating? <laughs> Where? The house. Baby, there's nothing there. Yes, it is. No, there's not. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. Stop it. I wish I could be a pirate again. You do? Yeah. When were you a pirate? I was a long time ago when you went alive and then I shrunk into a little kid. And I never could get a, be a pirate again. Caught my puppy playing tug of war with a ghost. Sorry. Sorry. Right there's downstairs where there's that coffee. Coffee. Remember? Yeah, I think it was in that room right there, the last room, the very last room on this side. Rolling down there. Turn off the lights, and you're going to see how fast you can get to me. But the moment the lights come back on, the moment the lights come back on, you have to stop, okay? You have to pause. Can you do that? Okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay, one more time, okay? You ready? What the fuck? Hello. Parents who don't believe their kids really annoy me because what? Why why would you not believe your child? Like there's this notion where people believe that kids are just kids, but kids are not just kids. Because have you seen the kind of conversations these kids are having? Like adult conversations. So how do you expect this child not to know what exactly they are saying? And you know, just for the matter of you being a parent, yeah? Like the mom should have at least validated the child. Like, I know it looks delusional or something, but at least validate your child. Let the child feel safe being around you or being around the house. If they tell you something is uncomfortable, then it is uncomfortable. I believe the mom is inviting the ghost or whatever it is to stay. Let me know if this is a good or a bad thing. You want to give her a fruit? Is she trying to take it? Oh my god. High five Mimi. Does anybody have an explanation for that?
That's one. Two. Three. Oh! oh! Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Oh my goodness. That's four. Five. Six. Oh man, he's on a roll. Almost done with row number one. The bottles just keep on coming. Let's go, Colin. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching up to this far. If you haven't subscribed, kindly subscribe down below. Smash the like button so that we can push this video up the algorithm. And I'm going to see you on to the next video. Bye.